Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. Before we get started on this video tutorial, I want to mention you can follow me on Instagram at the Sewing Room channel and also please check out my Facebook page. You'll see fun and exciting behind the scene pictures of projects that I'm working on and also little shopping trips. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really cute Christmas pot holder and a matching kitchen towel. So let's get started. The type of fabric that I'm using in this tutorial is quilting fabric. This is the seasonal fabric with all types of Christmas things on it. In this type of fabric, it's ideal for the pot holder. I will be cutting out the Santa Claus to be in the middle of the pot holder and I'll be cutting out the Santa Claus and the reindeer for the bottom of the towel. For the pot holder, you will need two squares of cotton batting that are eight inches square, or you can use one layer of cotton batting and one layer of Insulbrite, which is a synthetic fabric that helps to block the heat. You'll also need a piece of fabric for the back of the pot holder that is 8 inches square, a piece of fabric for the front that is 8 inches square, and then you'll also need four 4 and 1 quarter inch squares of fabric, plus you'll need a strip of fabric for the binding that is 2 inches wide, I've got mine folded already, two inches wide this way and 42 inches long that way. On the back of your small squares, these are the four and one quarter inch squares, you're going to draw a line going from corner to corner. So place your ruler up against those two corners and then draw a line. And again, you do that on all four. Take your squares, two of them, and put them in opposite corners with the front side, the pretty side of the fabric, down against your fabric. When you're stitching these on, you're going to stitch very close to that drawn line that you put on there, but stitch on this side of the line. You're not stitching on top of the line, but right next to it. So do that on both of them. So this one, you'll stitch on this side of the line and in this one you'll stitch on this side of the line. Then take a ruler, put the quarter inch line on your stitch line, and then trim the corners off. And then go to the other side and put that quarter inch line on your, draw, your stitch line and then trim. Then, at your ironing board, press these seams on the back side and then open them up like this and press on top and make sure that this seam is going towards your little triangle piece right there. Take your last two squares and place them in the opposite corners. You will find that they will overlap right here and they are supposed to. If they're not overlapping, recheck the size of your squares to make sure they were cut correctly. So again, you're going to stitch close to the line on this side of the line for this one and on this side of the line. After stitching, then you're going to trim these corners off and again, place your quarter inch line on there and trim, go to the other side, place it on there, and whoops, there we go, and trim. Then press your seams on the back side, then unfold, press on top, and again make sure these seams are going towards your little triangles. When you're done, it should look like this on the front side. So if you did cut something out specific to be in the middle, it should line up if you've cut it out correctly. And then on the back, 
you can see all of the seams are going out and away from the center of the square. Now layer your fabrics. Take your fabric for the back and place the pretty side, the front side of it, down against your table. Then take your cotton batting and or your insole bright squares, place those down, then place the top for the pot holder right on top of that. Then take pins and pin your layers together because you're going to do a few quilting stitches to hold all of the layers together. After you have it all pinned, then I suggest you do quilting stitches. The simplest one, if you don't want to spend a lot of time doing those stitches, is to just stitch in the ditch along these four edges right here. If you want to get more decorative, you can do a pattern like this where you just stitch a few inches apart, then turn it and repeat the same pattern again. You can even do this pattern on a diagonal. You would just be stitching from corner to corner. And most computerized sewing machines have the serpentine stitch. This is my favorite. You can do the same design doing a few rows going across this way, then turn it, and then go across this way. To make the quilting stitches easier for you, this is a walking presser foot. And these are easy to get. You can go on Amazon or go to your local supply, or excuse me, sewing supply store, and they can get one for you if they don't have it. And they're very affordable. They can start from anywhere from $25 up to $150. After you're done doing your quilting stitches, sometimes you might notice your ed edges are a little crooked. So to make it easier to put the binding on, you may want to clean your edges up just a little bit. So I'm going to trim just a little bit of this off, not much, just to make it easier to, to put the binding on. So just go around to all of your edges if you need to and trim them off. To cut out your binding strip really easy, when you purchase your fabric, your salvage edges, that's usually this white stuff right here, are, they're together, so they're folded together. I recommend you just fold your fabric again in half. You're going to trim this edge straight before you start uh, cutting your binding out. So this way you start off with a nice clean edge. So trim it. And now move over two and a half inches and cut it straight again. Then, after you've got your strip straight, or cut, I should say, then trim your selvage edges off. So place your ruler on there and trim it off. At just one end of your binding strip, fold it over a quarter of an inch and press it with your iron then fold the entire binding strip in half and press it all the way down the full length. Take the end of your binding strip where you folded the end over a quarter of an inch, place it a little bit past the center, place pins across, and then stitch one quarter inch all the way down across here and when you get one quarter inch of, away from this edge then stop and back stitch. Now fold the binding back like this so that the edge of the binding is even with the edge of your pot holder and place your finger or thumb there to hold it in place fold it over and line it up with this edge. Then pin it down all the way across and again stitch one quarter inch seam along here and every time you come to a corner you're going to stop one quarter inch away. 
Now take this end of your binding, place it back on top, and stitch. And this time you're going to stop stitching about three stitches as you overlap this part here. So you don't want to stop stitching right at it. Just come over about three or four stitches, then back stitch. Now take the pot holder and turn it to where the front side is down. And you're going to trim this off. So pull your binding out like this and you're going to trim it down to four and a half inches long. So one, two, three, four and a half right here and trim it off. With the back side up, and this is pulled out, unfold it a little bit to where you've just got one layer here that you're holding on to. And you're going to trim about an inch and a quarter square off. Now don't cut all the way up to the fold line. You're going to stay a little ways from that fold line and then cut it off going this way so that when you're done you have this little square right there. All right, with the back side still up, you're going to do this next step at your ironing board. Take this end and fold it over one quarter inch and then press it. Now take the raw edge of the binding and fold it over a quarter of an inch and then press. Now take it in half, fold it in half I mean, and then press it one more time. Now your back side of the pot holder is up and you're going to fold the binding over from the front to the back side. And when you fold it over, you're going to be pinning it down. You want to make sure that this folded edge here goes past your quarter inch stitch line. So pull it past. And I'm going to show you how to do those mitered corner folds. It's really very easy. So on each side of the corner, pin and then go to the other side of the corner and place a pin. So now you have this bump. Take a straight pin, press down, push the pin all the way over to the other side, fold it over, and pin. So pin all of your edges down and make sure you fold all of those corners as I just demonstrated. I'm going to start stitching right here where the two pieces of binding come together. And you're going to do stitch in the ditch. And that's where the binding and the pot holder fabric, fabric come together. So stitch right down in there. So go ahead and lower your needle. And make sure you're not stitching on top of your binding and stitch right in that ditch and take your time. Now and when you come to the corner, leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot and turn the pot holder like this. Now you're going to go down this edge. So continue going around all four sides and when you get around to where you started, you want to stop. Now I'm back to where I started. So I've got the end of the binding here and I'm going to show you how to make a hanging loop. So you're going to still stitch in the ditch a little bit farther and then you're going to pull the end of your binding strip out away from the pot holder and you'll notice that it's a little curved right there. So as you come to where it begins to curve, you're going to begin stitching on top 
of this piece of binding here. So go ahead and begin stitching. And now I'm going to start turning the pot holder and I'm going to stitch both ends together. Make sure that the edges are folded together here on this piece that comes out. And remember, make sure you keep both ends of the binding edges here together because you're going to stitch down this little tail here of your binding. So that's why it's important that you have it pressed correctly. So keep stitching. And when you get to the end down here, Now stop, let your presser foot come up, turn your binding like this, and you're going to stitch across the bottom edge. And then do a couple of back stitches, and then you're done. So take the end of your loop, and you're going to bring it around like this and bring it over the back side. And I would place a straight pin to hold in place. And then I like to stitch it down from the front side, so I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to stitch just a little square, right or kind of a rectangle shape, right along in here. And I'm going to go around about two times. So I'm going to start up here at the top edge and just begin stitching. Then I'm going to leave my needle down, turn the pot holder, go down towards the edge of the binding strip, and then stop, turn it again, and go across, turn it again. And I recommend you go around two times. Here it is on the back side, and here it is on the front side. Now I'm going to show you how to do a really simple and quick border for the bottom edge of the towel. This is a towel I bought at Walmart, and it is a deep, deep green with some gold going through it. So if you're using light fabric like I am, you probably want to have your towel just a little bit darker than this border fabric here. Measure the width of your towel across the bottom edge. Mine is 15 inches. So after you've measured the width of your towel, you're going to cut your border fabric out two and a half inches wider. So my towel measured about 15 inches, so I cut my border fabric 17 and a half inches wide. I also cut it 7 inches this way. I added an extra inch to how much I wanted because we will be hemming this. So if you want a 6 inch wide piece, you need to add an extra inch. And that's why I cut mine 7 inches. I also centered the Santa and the reindeer. That was my plan. So I made sure I cut my border strip out surrounding this area right there. So on the back, you're going to turn your top edge over one quarter inch and press it with your iron. On the lower edge, you're going to fold it over once and press it with your iron. Fold it over again and press it with your iron. Then on just this bottom edge, you're going to stitch close to this folded edge all the way across. After stitching the bottom edge down, then go to each end, fold it over a quarter of an inch and press, fold this over a quarter of an inch and press, and then stitch again alongside this inside folded edge and make sure you do it at the opposite side also. Center the border across the bottom edge 
and I like to place my border pieces to where the bottom of the border comes about one inch past the bottom of the towel. Towels are usually very uneven at the bottom of the edge and that's why I like to place it below so that you can straighten it out. You want to overlap the sides and pin them down and then stitch across this edge all the way down and do that at both ends. Also pin it across the top edge here and then you'll stitch close to this folded edge all the way across. I'm placing half inch wide rickrack along the top edge and I've cut it wider than the towel because I wanted enough to fold it around to the back. As you are placing your rickrack you're going to overlap the border fabric and the towel so that you don't see where that towel and fabric is coming together. So that seam is completely hidden and of course wrap this around and I recommend you place pins to hold. Then you would stitch right along the center of the rickrack all the way across. And there it is. When you're all done you have a beautiful decorative set for your kitchen or remember you can even give this as a gift idea and also you don't have to make it out of Christmas fabric you can make it out of anything that you like. Well I hope you enjoyed making this pot holder and decorative towel. Now for other kitchen towel and pot holder projects check below the YouTube screen for other links. Thanks for watching and happy sewing! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing!